Life Fight with Jermaine Andre is a positive production of Rare Gem Productions. For previous episodes or to get new episode updates, subscribe to the Life Fight channel hosted on the Inspiration Network of OneRareGem.com. That's O-N-E-R-A-R-E-G-E-M.com. For the tools you need to take on your life fight. With U.S. Martial Arts Hall of Famer, two-time world champion, five-time U.S. champion, UFC vet, life coach, and author, Jermaine Andre. Visit JermaineAndre.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Life Fight. I'm Jermaine Andre, and I got my co-host, Rebecca Beck, with me. Again. Hello. And today's going to be a really, really good day because I got something I want to talk about that I've actually been wanting to talk about for the longest, but I just didn't want to bore everybody with it. <laughs> Because it's not, it has very little to do with fighting, and because of my background, I know that you know the martial arts and action is what people you know really want to probably hear about. But this is something that I feel is very important, especially with the time and you know with the uh, situations that are occurring right now. But one thing I did, you know, I try to feed, you know, give a lot of feedback from uh, Facebook, and one of the things that someone on Facebook asked me was, you know. Um, what kind of martial art techniques could be good for certain types of situations? So I'm going to start. I'm start trying to do is let you know what techniques from the martial art background of my study. That doesn't mean that martial art martial arts that I haven't studied couldn't work in that situation either. It's just I can't say it will work if I haven't studied it. I'm just going to come from the 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 big variety because I got a whole bunch of martial arts I did study and a bunch of techniques that I know that would be best to use in any type of situation. Okay. So uh, I'm going I'm to let you start. Yeah. You got any, got any questions on what, what type of situation? Uh, well, let's go ahead and start with the one that was asked from one of our, this is one that was asked from one of our uh, Facebook fans. Um, when you're in an elevator, what kind of technique would you use if you were under attack? Well, if you're in an elevator, um, you're in an enclosed place, spot, you know, you figure it's uh, going to be really tight. You're going to be really close to the person. Now, are you talking if the elevator door is closed and you're both in the elevator? Yeah, let's say that. Okay. If the elevator is closed, you're in the elevator. And I'm going to say that the best thing would be probably Muay Thai, Muay Thai kickboxing. The elbows of Muay Thai kickboxing and the knees of Muay Thai kickboxing. Because, one, you know, uh, when, you, when you're that close, it's going to be hard to load anything else for power. Like, you don't want to try and kick because you don't really have room. You yep. know, and I'm assuming that you real tight to each other because if somebody's gonna uh, by the time you figure out that you're under attack in the elevator it's probably because they're about two feet in front of you because they're already three to four feet away from you because mm-hmm. you're in an enclosed area it's not like i'm walking out of the bar and somebody across the street says hey man i'm gonna kick you you know and i know they're coming <laughs> so right now he's already inside of my safety parameter yeah. because i'm forced to be there because i'm in this elevator so he closer than i want him to be anyway so when that attack happens pow it's gonna be he's gonna be one foot away from me. So with Muay Thai, you got short range, elbow strikes, and because of the way the body moves, you got room to 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 uh, gain power and yeah. to to build power and to release power without needing a lot of space right. to to you know to load up the power. And the same thing with the knees. The the knee strikes of Muay Thai are so you know so so tightly put together that you can knee a person, and if the person grabs you. You've got the clinching Muay Thai, where you can clinch them around the neck and then keep boom, boom, boom delivering those knees. So yeah. I would say the, the the Muay Thai strikes of, uh, you know, the elbow and knee strikes and Muay Thai kickboxing. At what point are you pushing the button to open the elevator so you can get out? Uh, after you knock him out. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't want to take your attention off of him until he's down for good. Because yeah. I don't know how many floors you're going up or down. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you might be stuck in there for a while. <laughs> so that would be that'd – be, that, that would be the uh, – the techniques that I would suggest for, you know, a, a enclosed tight situation like that. Well, uh, that works in certain situations, but let's say you have a woman that's in an elevator and she's got a shopping bag in one hand, she's got a purse in one hand, and she doesn't have those um, elbows and those hands to use. What should she do then? Well, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm going to say if a woman's in an elevator with a man, um, she should have her hand on her CCW <laughs> <laughs> or on her pepper spray or on a knife or on a coubertin as soon as she gets in there. You yeah. know, that's automatic. She should have it in her hand ready to go. So if she doesn't have it in her hand or she doesn't carry anything, the, uh, let's say she's got a purse. You know, um, I do teach women certain ways to carry their purse. Like there's a way that I carry my gym bag. So if action hits, I can release myself and free myself from it. And that's the whole thing. If people trap themselves 
in their bags and backpacks and things like that where you get in a situation you can't free yourself from it so of course she would first of all have to be trained how to free herself from it or to make sure it doesn't restrict her from defending herself and that where that's where you get into preparedness you know you have to when you walk out the door and that's what we talked about a long time ago walking out the door being prepared that an attack might happen you know don't carry don't don't put yourself in a situation where oh something happened to me and i had my bag so i couldn't fight back Mm -hmm. you know but the elbows and the knees definitely the knees let's say you got a purse like you're saying even if you got it on your arm your elbow wherever you got it that doesn't restrict your knees you know, even wearing high heels doesn't restrict your knee. Now, it might restrict your balance. Yeah. You know, but you can still, boom, boom, throw those knees. And it doesn't restrict the elbow motion either. Because yeah. if your purse is in your hand, you drop your purse and you go to work. You so know, you pow, think. Pow, 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 you fight. And if it's on your shoulder, that's not going to affect you moving either. Boom, boom, boom. So you think with no actual Muay Thai training that someone can just naturally use their elbow or their knees to take oh, someone down? Definitely. You know, I mean, hu- human beings naturally know how to fight. Yeah. You know, naturally. They're not good at it. You know, and you still have to be trained to get good at it. But the, the martial arts was created by a human being. You know what I'm saying? Somebody figured it out. So if, so if a person standing there, you just think to yourself, I'm just going to hit this person with the elbow the best way I can. And you use the, the thought that you're in danger and you release that energy. It can hurt somebody, you know, yeah, like that. But I'm not recommending. I'm always recommending to get the proper training so you can hit the person right. So you don't shatter your elbow, yeah. you know, or miss and fall up and fall off balance or, you know, hit them with one and it doesn't work. And you uh, freeze up when all you had to do is hit them with another one, you yeah. know, which is the kind of stuff that you learn in a um, you know, self-defense and awareness course. So, um, well, I think with a lot of times with women, they really naturally think more about just when it comes to that kind of stuff, just swinging and maybe getting their purse and swinging and using their fingernails or using their, I think that's more what women would think about doing. So do you have even something to say about that? Like I said, I think sometimes, you know, a technique, if they've never been trained how to use it, might not naturally come to them. I think when it comes to that, I think they think more just about swinging and using whatever they have in their hands. But that's, I mean, that's really interesting because now when you say that, you know, they think about clawing. Yeah, fingernails. You're talking kung fu. Mm-hmm. And kung fu is probably the deadliest self-defense art. That's when you're attacking eyeballs and throats. and th- You know what I'm saying? So, But, you know, really a woman clawing, she's probably going to break her nail. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Their, their <laughs> fingers on, you know, in, in tiger kung fu, you train and condition your fingers and your nails so you can't, you know, rip skin when you attack someone in that manner. And a, a, a woman today, nowadays, you know, if her nail's even real, yeah. you know, for one, it might be fake and they just pop off. So I, I couldn't re- recommend that because that, that, that may, you know, you know, like I said, if you get attacked in the park and you scratch somebody's face and they go, oh, let go, then you can run off. Yeah. You, you can't run. Mm. You got to put That's this person true. down. So you got to, you got to make this, you got to put you need this a person down. stronger account. technique. Yeah. Now, an eye flick or an eye gouge. Yeah. You know, it's something that can work, too. But, again, that's if you put them down. Uh, eye flick from up close might make them grab their eye, and then they may continue to attack. Because when I teach the eye flick, you know, uh, an eye strike, eye jab, I teach you to hit and get away because they're going to grab their eye and let go. But if you, ah, and, they, and it makes them mad and get more motivated, they'll open that other eye or something like that. Plus, the eye is a very hard target to hit yeah. with your fingers. You know, we see that when we train people on the bob. And I say, yes, all you got to do is poke somebody in the eye. And everybody goes, oh, wow, that's easy. I say, yeah, and I go up to the bob and try to do it. You know, it's like, whoa, <laughs> it's kind of yeah. hard to get. So when you're nervous and shaking and he's moving around and you, you know, but an elbow, you throw that, that's going to be right there. That head's a, a, a big target, you know, and that can work easy. But, of course, what's the, the main thing I teach everybody, women, everybody, nobody wants to hear the best thing to work, a headbutt. Yeah. You know, nobody can expect there is no block in the martial art for, an, <laughs> for a headbutt, yeah. you know, because it's not expected to happen. You know, the only thing I can think you do is put your hands in front, but you know it's going to happen. There's so much power loaded behind. You're going to smack yourself in the face. Mm-hmm. and You're going to do the job with the back of your knuckles against your face. So there's really not a block. You know, you just evade and move out the way. But no man's going to expect to be headbutted by a woman. So mm-hmm. I would say that's the number one tool, you know, yeah. is to put that forehead right in his face. Don't go, you know, forehead to forehead, forehead bone right in his face. You know, and that'll shatter. That, that, the face is made of small bones put together. It'll, you know, and that could be a good way to put him down. Because that's the main thing in the elevator, you know, where I'm assuming you don't know when you're getting off. You know, the, we're not saying this is one floor ride or a 20 floor ride, how long or maybe he pushed the stop button. Anything could happen. You're in there. You have to put this person down and shut them down for good. Mm-hmm. And I would say, you know, the Muay Thai kickboxing elbows and knees, you know, because even the knees, a, um, 
you know, a, a woman, a 120-pound woman, 115-pound woman, if she got her hands around the neck of a man and started driving those knees into his rib cage, yeah. she can fracture his rib cage. Okay. You know, if she just driving, 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 and driving, and he drops his hands to cover his ribs, and then she elbows him in his temple, you know, she can really do some serious damage. Okay. So that answer that for you? Yep. Yeah, because I always think about that. That's what one situation I'm always in is when I, you know, go to the car wash or something, and I go to vacuum the car out, and I, my back's completely turned. I always think about, you know. I got different techniques for that one. We can't, I, this is elevated today. Okay. We're trying to get double all answers right, out All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring up the car wash on the next one because I got different techniques for that one okay. also because you, you got some space there. <laughs> no, not if you get in the car and you're completely entrapped. Yeah, then you still still different techniques, though. Yeah. You can't use Muay Thai in the car. Well, you would need something that would have to completely knock them out, or else you wouldn't be able to get from underneath well, them and no, get out we, of the car. That's a whole. No, you're gonna take up the whole podcast. With that. All right. You got your answer on the elevators. <laughs> leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> the topic that I wanted to, to cover is called um, the cure, and the cure is something that I created, and I created it, you know, through, through my every my everyday life of what I've lived and what I've experienced, and I've experienced a lot. You know, uh, there's a you know book coming out. And there's going to be some serious controversy over what I've been through in my life, you know, in the fight career, in the streets. You know, I've lived, you know, with a, a good life. I've lived with the, the poor. I went to school, you know, in the worst neighborhoods. I went to the best schools. I've traveled the world. You know, I was a cowboy in Wyoming, you know. So, I've, I mean, I'm talking in Sheridan, Wyoming, where there were no black people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I've lived there. I've been there. You know, I was a butcher. You know, I was a construction worker. I was a farmer. So, I've lived around all these different types of people and been involved in all these types of things. So I got a really, really good, you know, idea of what a good person and a bad person is. Right. And, you know, all of the, the prejudice and the, the prejudging and things that people do f towards each other, how stupid it is and how other people and other entities or not entities, other people and other things use this to keep everybody separate so they can control them. Well, they got something else happening. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've got a really good, you know, view on that. But now, you know, we're all trying to, you know, solve the issues of society, the, the, the problems we got going on, you know, with, you know, with teens, with kids, with, you know, uh, a marriage. I mean, I think most marriages end in divorce. I mean, I don't know how many even last these days, you know, and, I, uh, and I, that's another podcast. Cause I think the way society's set up now causes that to happen it doesn't support a good marriage mm -hmm. and without that support it makes it hard on the two who are married and they don't even know it yeah. they think it's each other's fault and it's you know it's just what you have to do to survive every day that keeps you separate as man and woman mm -hmm. you know so there's a lot that i can go into there but let's get back to the cure so one day somebody was talking you know we were talking this i was talking to somebody i think it was one of my um the uh, police officer friends and it, everybody's trying to figure out a decision after, you know, the Ferguson thing. And, you know, well, how do we solve this? How do we stop that? I'm looking on Facebook and everybody's showing pictures of their guns. And, you know, oh, yeah, I guess uh, somebody come here, I'm going to shoot them in their face. And I'm going to, you know, I'm just sitting there saying, you know, you know, that all sounds good. And, and you might be ready to shoot somebody in the face. But what's going to happen when somebody shoots your kid in the face and your kid ain't mm -hmm. don't want to fight? What mm -hmm. happens when they catch your wife or your girlfriend or your sister? You, you know what I'm saying? So just because you want to act tough, you don't want to create that element because, when a bullet doesn't, when a bullet hits the air, it doesn't matter if you got a badge on or not. It's mm -hmm. unforgiving, right? And it, it doesn't always hit the right person. So you know, I'm saying, you know, everybody, each side needs to chill, <laughs> you know, and we need to get into, you know, trying to fix the problem instead of becoming a part of the problem and thinking our side's going to win, whichever side it is you're on, because that's what you, that's when you start getting these wars, and nobody ever wins because even if one side wins at that moment, like they say, you win the battle. You never know when the war ends. The war can resurface a hundred years later. Yeah. Now your grandkids are dealing with it while you sit in a rocket chair. Go, oh my God, what is going? You can't even move. But now you're going to suffer and watch your grandkids go through crap. So, when I came up with the cure, it was something that I learned, you know, from um, some tactics that were used on me actually by something that I'm going to bring out in the book. And the cure, when I when I when I came up with, it, I said, what does this mean? The cure, what you need is, and it's an acronym. It stands for compassion understanding respect and education and now there's this cure that i came up with and we're gonna break it down it's it's something that i use personally every day on the people that i meet you know because we all have prejudices we all prejudge you know and prejudging is even a part of awareness you know yeah. what i'm saying if i'm walking down the street unless i got you with me we downtown and i see five guys sagging 
you know what I'm saying, talking loud on their cell phones and looking. We moving to the other side of the street. Yeah. You know, that's called profiling. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's the same thing, too. If I'm walking down the street, there's some bikers, you know, over there, and they smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. We moving to the other side of the street. If we walking down the street and there's five guys in business suits walking down, talking on cell phones, clean, we're not going to move to the other side of the street. You know, we're going to say, hey, guys, you know what I'm saying? And it, it, it ain't to me, it ain't going to matter what color their skin are. It's the way that they are presenting themselves, right. which is a whole other podcast, too. We're going to get into that one later. You know, but... <laughs> As far as the cure, compassion, understanding, respect, and education, my cure, it destroys racism, it destroys sexism, it destroys confusion, it destroys prejudice, you know, and it, it allows you to communicate because the worst thing that human beings do with each other is communicate. Yeah. When we don't understand each other, we don't communicate, that's when war starts. You know, somebody gets mad and they throw a punch. You know, violence is the last form of communication. We try to do everything we can to get somebody to see things our way, and then it turns to the point to where we lose it, and we start punching, or we start stabbing, or we start shooting, or we start nuking. Whatever it is, it's because somebody's mad. Mm-hmm. Somebody lost their emotions, you know what I'm saying, and couldn't handle the stress. You know, so this that's what if it, it, this is a way for when we approach someone, it kind of how can I put it? It it, it kind of pro- sets us in a, in a position in our mind where. We're not going to be offended too fast, so fast. Right. You know, we're gonna we're gonna be more tolerant towards them and willing to and to learn and accept things about them. So, having said all of that, um, let's go through. Let's go through compassion, it. understanding, respect, education. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm we want to define each word because, like I said, you know, let me tell another story. I know I'm talking too much. But that's why I got a podcast. <laughs> Let me tell them a story. So I can do that on this. This is cool. Usually everybody be like, okay. you talk too much. It, communication is, is so tricky. And this is where people have to understand when it comes to communication. Just because you think you understand and you got it don't mean you do. Mm-hmm. And I'll give an example. One time I was riding with a friend. And we were in a, a car. And she had a Jeep. And she's driving. And she says, see, I hate people like that. I'm like, like what? And she points to this Jeep in front of us and says, on the, uh, he's got a bumper sticker on there that says trucks are girl toys and I looked and it was this souped up jeep and it had a bumper sticker that said trucks are girl toys I said well why would you hate him she said because he's calling trucks girl toys saying guys who drive trucks are girls and I said no I don't think so and the windows were tinted I said I think that's a girl and she's considering her jeep as a truck mm-hmm. and she said no it's not it's a guy and he's putting down people who drive trucks because he's saying his jeep is cool and a truck like a pickup truck or whatever is you know is a girl toy i said well pull up and let's see so we pulled up beside it and it was a girl mm-hmm. you know and so she of course she got mad at me for being <laughs> right which i don't I understand that you know but i told her i said no i said this the whole thing is it could have been a guy it could have been a guy in a jeep saying trucks are girl toys my mm-hmm. jeep is a you know your truck's a girl toy a jeep is a man's you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so that's how communication is so just yeah. because i was right in that incident and that that incident at that moment doesn't mean we couldn't have took that girl out and put a guy in there and it been the other way right so there's always so many we all have to stop and think and consider all kinds of things when we're communicating with each other because mm-hmm. most of the time we take things wrong yeah well we're all raised differently so i was raised you know to believe that i'm supposed to follow this path and that this is right and this is wrong and this person might be raised that what I think is right is wrong. So you just never know, you know, what people believe or, or, or how they were raised. So it, definitely I agree that. Well, we don't even need to talk about the black and gold dress. Yeah. The blue and gold <laughs> dress. Because everybody going to get mad. And say, I'm not listening to Jermaine anymore. You know, <laughs> that showed it right there. Yeah. How we all see things differently, mm-hmm. you know. So let's define compassion first. Okay. okay. And let's get moving before we run out of time. Yes. All right. Compassion is the emotion that one feels in response to the suffering of others that motivates a desire to help. A compassion. So w- whenever I meet someone, you know, it's like this. I've got my style. I mean, look at, I mean, look at my hair. Yeah. You know, that's wild. You know, it is. It is for a 43-year-old man. My, my hair is wild. But when I meet an MMA fan, that's the, my hair is the bomb. <laughs> you know, man, that's some Muay Thai stuff. That's the, when I meet a Native American, oh, man, that's the, that's the Lakota tribe. You know, mm-hmm. When I meet, you know, I meet an a African. Oh, man, the dreads, brother. It's good you're, you're sticking to the, the lifestyle, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's still where when I meet a, a Zulu, you know, a warrior, anybody, a samurai. Oh, you got the samurai bun on right. top and the shave on the side. You know, so but when I meet a businessman, what the heck's wrong with this fool? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it goes that way that anybody, we all have prejudgment. So even me. I have them when I meet somebody and I see something, 
I try to my brain programs the processes to what I want to assume he's going to sound like, look yeah. like, act like, respond like all this happens. And we have to shut that down because we're taught to do that. Yeah. And we have to shut that down. So the first thing I use is compassion. And I say, when I meet this person, if I in any way look down on them, maybe they went through something in their life that if I had to go through what they went through, I'd be in worse condition than they are. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I would have smoked myself because I couldn't handle it. So that's the first thing I do is I say, I'm trying to understand that this person is here today in this position and probably dealing with issues that could be so horrible that they shouldn't even be here. You know, they shouldn't even be standing here right now. They shouldn't even be, you know, making it through the day. Right. And so if I, when, when you look at them like that, that automatically shuts down that, that, that hate. Right. You know, that, that prejudice can uh, create, that it can make, make us, you know, make us turn into because we look at somebody and we don't, under, we don't understand them or we look at something and something turns us off about them. Right. So if you got that, that automatic compassion, because I'll even do that, you know, if you see, let's say, like, um, I see somebody that's that's sagging. All right. And I'm talking, talking 1980 sagging. I'm talking new millennium where it's down to their knees. Oh, my gosh. We just saw it. Oh, yeah. We just <laughs> saw it where it's down to their knees. I, I don't like that. That's not my thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I never I came up through the generation where sagging started lower, but right below the waist, which that's another podcast where sagging actually truly comes from. <laughs> you know, so I'm not even going to say where say that now. I'm going to save that for later. But I didn't even sag like that back then. It just wasn't my thing. You know, but when I look at him and I say, man, look at this fool, you know, and I say that to myself, the first thing I think, and I say, no, Jermaine, you can't be thinking like that. You don't know what that dude's going through. You don't know yeah. why he's doing, you know what I'm saying? So, and that the compassion automatically stops mm-hmm. with that. Okay. If you had to grow up where he had to grow up, how he had to grow up, you might be sagging too. Right. Just like that. And be misunderstood. Just like your crazy haircut you got right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, well, and you having compassion for someone just it settles that emotion for the way you feel about them at the moment. That doesn't mean you have to bring them home to your friends and your family and your kids. It just means, you know, at that moment when you're dealing with them, you have to have that emotion with them. Well, and, it, and like, and then, you know, what else it does? Compassion does is it, it shuts down their guard. Yeah. Because when they see that you, you know, you're not, you know, fluffing your feathers at them, got your chest stuck out at them, right. you know, because you feel a little offended, you feel this and that, you know, that kind of helps to stop that. And it helps the communication to work a little better. Right, in the situation. Right, okay. right. Yeah, it, it doesn't last forever. You're gonna it gives you time you gotta take time to learn, get to learn the person. Right. You know, so but now um understanding. Definition of understanding. To be aware of other people's feelings, to be tolerant and to be forgiving. And that that right there says it all on you know, um yeah, it does. to be tolerant. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, you like uh, you know, you see people put stuff on Facebook about saggers. You know, about um, these kids. Uh, I say now kids are doing like crazy piercings, you know, um, tattoos, you know, just everything that's going on out there. And if you, you know, I always say, this, I always say this. Have you ever asked a guy why he sags? Yeah, no, that's a really have good Have you ever point. just walked up and said, hey, why do you wear, wait, not, wait. not in the bag, what do you got your pants like that for? Because yeah. he going to automatically, you don't tell me what to do, you know. Mm-hmm. But just, hey, look, yeah, I'm just, just curious. Yeah. Why do you wear your pants like that? Right. You know, because he, he may, you know, he may be sagging his pants like that, you know, because it's a style or whatever. You know, it may be because of, you know, gang affiliation. It may be because of the neighborhood he lives in. There's neighborhoods in St. Louis where if you walk around with your pants up and a belt on, you're going to get beat up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're a square. Yeah. They're going to be, hey, man, who you think you is? You think you're better than us? You know, and so he may say, man, I have to wear my pants like this or I'm going to get beat up. Yeah. He may be a, a, a A-plus math student. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's somebody that you like, oh, and you end up being best friends with him and he end up doing your accounting for you in 10 mm-hmm. years. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> if you try to understand somebody yeah. and understand why they do it, then that's going to shut down that, that prejudice yeah. again. Because I'll tell you something. I went on uh, Facebook when there was some bad talk about the Saggers and I had to slam everybody. And I said, you know what? Everybody shut up because you remember when we used to wear boxer shorts to school? <laughs> boxer? I'm, nah, straight. I, don't, I don't remember seeing that, but you well, talk about it. Well, you old enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is back like in the 90s and late 80s. I'm talking straight at Pattonville. I'm, I'm busting all of you out at Pattonville High School. And it was a jock thing. Yeah. We wore straight boxer shorts with no pants. Hmm. And the school let us. I don't know how to. And it was stylish. We even had our, our, our year, you know, on the end <laughs> of the boxer shorts. That's underwear. Yeah. We were it wearing is. under. So if sagging, they say, you're showing his draws. What is 
Yeah. You know, what is wearing boxer shorts? That's pure underwear. You ain't even got a pair of pants showing nowhere. Give give us a ticket for back then. Right. You know, and the cops were looking. They were cool with it. They didn't think a big deal of it. So it's still, but that's because we were in a, you know, we were in Maryland Heights, which is a prominent area. You know what I'm saying? And we were all, you know, football, you know, people going up, you know, uh, everybody's uh, parents were doing, had a prominent job. So it was okay. It was just a kid thing for us. So it still goes back to that. But mm -hmm. right now, if I was to walk in this building with some boxer shorts on, they'll have me arrested. <laughs> you know, I said, what the heck is yeah. it? Or if we sent a kid to, send a kid to school in boxer shorts, they'll go, you'll go, man, you'll probably get put on the sexual offenders list now the way things are. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it, that's where it goes. But we were running around in those boxer shorts, and it was just a style. It was just something that made us cool. So if we start looking into it, just like, you know, tattooing is something that these kids are really, really getting into like crazy with something – I don't, you know, you look at me, you don't see tattoos all over me. I'm not sleeve. Even though I see some tattoos that look cool, I see people that are tatted up and it's dope. You know what I'm saying? But that's still, that's still their style. Even though I don't agree with it, trying to understand why they do it and let them know that you're trying to understand them makes it easier for you to communicate. Right. So you would say one of the, one of the keys to understanding would be to question people. Definitely. To qu ask them questions, you know. What, whether it's about you know something they're doing or the way they're doing something that so that's really important you did a scenario um a while back when we were talking about the cure and you were talking about um a, uh, putting somebody in the situation of understanding somebody or a bum it was a bum that was on the street and you did a really good scenario um and i think that you should go over that just to kind of give somebody you know what, i'll do that at the end after i get through because i'll have to go through everything after okay. we read after we define everything then I'll um, come back to the scenario. Yep, I'll come back to All that. right. And before you go over respect, I'm, I'm going to add this. Um, this is something I always say too. If we all had to experience each other's life, and this this kind of scares me because sometimes I think oh that boy. this is yeah this we can really get deep now. So we 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 probably create a gain a ton of listeners or lose a bunch, you know. And I'm going to remind everybody before I say this that I'm not a preacher. I'm not a prophet. I'm not trying to lead anybody in anything. I just like to make you think to lead yourself. That's it. But this is where it sits at. If we all had to live each other's lives and experience each other's experiences, there would be no hate, no war, no nothing. There mm -hmm. would be pure peace. But what happens is we all don't experience each other's experiences, so we think we're better yeah. than what everybody, everybody, because we don't understand what they went through. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we meet somebody who we think is less than us, you know, it's like the, the muscle-bound guy. You know, that, like that's one thing that I, where I'm really, really – um, you know, big on is when I meet people and they see me and they're heavy set, they get intimidated that they think I think they're a failure. Right. And I don't. I feel sorry for you because I know that if you could, you'd be like me. Right. But something in your life, whether it's kids, your job, job right. doesn't allow you the opportunity to even get out there and try it. Mm -hmm. So it drives me insane because I'm thinking, you know, and I feel bad, you know, because I'm sitting there thinking, man, I got to figure out a way where he can work out or she can work out and still live, have their lifestyle. Right. You know, but getting into, you know, why I said I'm not a prophet, I'm not a preacher, all that stuff is I always say, man, I hope that we're, we may be that we're not put on this planet and we don't get to like leave. We, we got to keep coming back into living all these lives and going through all this crap <laughs> yeah. until we learn. Everybody's you know, to, to care yeah, yeah. until we learn it, till we get experience everything where it, it drains all the hate out of us. Yeah. Because what drains the hate out of you is to have to be it. Yeah. You know, you take a, a black guy that don't like white people, make them white and let them have to go live. He'll never dislike a white person again. Mm -hmm. Vice versa. You take a white person, don't like black people, let them live. You know, take a straight person that hates homosexuals and let him have to grow up a homosexual. He'll never hate him. Again. So it's, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Take a person, turn him into a cat or a dog that abuses cats and dogs. Let him have to go through with that poor cat mm -hmm. going through. He'll never abuse cats. So it's like. I sit and think and say, man, I wonder if that's what's going yeah. on here. We got millions of years we got to spend now until we get it. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, maybe we get to go home where we're supposed to be. So, yep. but um, having said that, I know you get ready to find respect before I stole the mic from you. To admire someone deeply as a result of their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Now, this is a really good one because um, we all have something that we can do. We all have something that we've accomplished. It's just whether you, you know it about the person you meet. So when I, when I meet somebody, the first thing I always try to do is find out their, find their good feature, you know, mm -hmm. what they like, what they've accomplished. Get them talking about their self. Get them talking about what they like. You know, they, and what, what they've accomplished may not be visible, 
But when you make somebody feel that you respect what they can do, then they don't feel like you're talking down to them. Right. You know, no matter what it is, it might be just a, a color. They might be an artist. You know, it may be the way that they dress. You know, yeah. it's just something that may be their hairstyle. You know, man, you got awesome taste in hairdos. You know, the way you did your hair is off. Now that person really feel. now you're starting to communicate. Right. You're starting to feel. So when you, when you give a person respect, it, it makes them like you. It makes them want to be around you, and it makes them want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. You know, so if I'm trying to, you know, work on a youth or something and fix some, you know, a troubled youth or a concerned youth, when I give him respect for something that he's accomplished, then he feels like I'm not talking down to him like he's right. nothing. that makes sense. You know, yeah. like, you know, oh, you just, you don't know anything. You ain't nothing. You know, so, and that's, that's the thing, too. Another thing is we all, you know, sticking with that, we all have, you know, fortunes and misfortunes in our personalities. And some of our misfortunes may make us uh, inoperable in society, in which I'll get that. That'll kind of come up. And what, I, what I'm saying that with that, that'll get back to the whole bum thing is if I if I told if I pick 10 people, I said, everybody go pick me 10 people. And I said, you all got six weeks. You got to do a cage fight. Probably most of them won't be able to do it. They're going to get the crap kicked out of them because they're not built for that. You know, being a, a, a good cage fighter, you know, a uh, pro a, well, a high-rated pro. <laughs> Let's go because right. we know what's happening with cage fight now. They just throwing anybody in there, and putting people who can't fight against people who can't fight. But to be a true, you know, MMA fighter, you have to have a certain type of, you know, uh, primitive mentality. You know, because we are going after each other like animals, and most human beings don't think like that. So that could be the same way with getting along in society. Some people, you know, like I always say, you know, there are people out there who can't talk like I can talk. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who can't communicate like I can. And a lot of times my, the way I communicate opens doors for me. Yeah. It's not that I'm better than them. And I feel sorry for them for that. Mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, the dude who talk like this, man, you know, he can't go where I can go. Yeah. And he can't change the way he talks. You know, the Mexican guy who's got an accent, you know, and he can't adjust that. He can't go. But if I was in his territory, yeah. you know, where they talk like that, I couldn't go. Mm -hmm. So well, it, it's, oh, go ahead. that's why you have to be able to, to. Um, see your own strengths and your weaknesses because when you can see your own weaknesses sometimes it allows you to see strengths in other people which Definitely. allows you to be able to communicate with them and, and allow them to be able to you know be in your circle of what you're looking for so definitely like you know when the, the one thing I did that I, that I really enjoyed and Bill we probably gonna go over 45 minutes with this one <laughs> so the one thing I did was when I went golfing with my students mm -hmm. you know and I had some old men with me Mm -hmm. who can't punch half as hard as me, half as fast, and they made me look horrible out there on the golf yeah. field. You know, I can't hit like Tiger Woods, but they was, and they ball going way over there, going right. in the pond three feet in front of it. Right. You know, so that just showed, though, right. you know, that we all have four. But if you, you know, and they didn't laugh at me. They didn't make me feel bad. They didn't rush me. They just helped me. Yeah. You know, did everything they could to help me. They were compassionate towards me, just like I am towards them in training. And if we all look at life like that, don't. You know, just because somebody's not get able to get through the doors, you can get through. Don't feel that they're they're lazy or they're being a, they're being stupid or mm -hmm. they this and that. They may just be unfortunate to be able to do what you can do or to have the like the willpower that I have. You know, yeah. going through all the things I went through in my life. You know, and people say that, "Well, you made you made it. They can make it too." And I say, yeah, "Maybe they don't have the willpower I do. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they don't wake up every morning feeling good like I do. Right. You know, maybe they wake up feeling bad. They got a depression. You know, and when you think like that, then it just opens that door. You know, for the compassion to understand and to, to give them the respect. Yeah. So. Well, it makes it easier because a lot of times people think that it's such a big step in trying to help somebody. They think they have to." you know, save, save them. And it's not yep. always just about saving them. It's just, man, you said, you, you said that right there on yeah. the nose. Remember we had a student that we hadn't seen in probably about a month. And you, I mean, you told me, you said, Hey, Hey, Jermaine, I, I don't feel good drawing from their account. Well, it was two months, mm -hmm. Well, we haven't seen them in a couple of months, you know? And I said, well, Rebecca, that's true. And that's horrible for business. And I agree with you. That's why we were not good business, <laughs> business people <laughs> <laughs> because we, we think, yeah, we're great trainers. That's it. That, that's why business ain't doing good. But you know, and I said, you know, and you said, Jermaine, you uh, probably should give him a call. I said, yeah, give me his number. And I called this individual, and this individual, you know, he's going through some hard times. And I said, man, you know, man, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, this and that, da da da, da. I said, man, I'm telling you, this training has saved my life. Yeah. You know, it's helped me big time. So, you know, if you need, man, we'll just, you know, we'll refund that money back to you, you know, because that'll probably help you out with what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, outside of that, if you, you know, you need help with anything, you can call me, whatever you want. Yeah. And he came back up. And he is killing it. Yeah, he's killing and it. And it's helping him and mm -hmm. everything. And he said, he came off office one day and he almost said, Jermaine, thanks for just calling me, man. Yeah. 
you know, and, and yeah, it wasn't showing such that a you were concerned. Step, right. yeah, it wasn't a big. I didn't. I'm not a psychologist. I don't have no psychology degrees over yeah. here and over there. But it was just me showing this guy that I cared right. and taking that initial step, and him knowing that the way he's going through that somebody cares. Yeah, that I don't even know this dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? He could have not called me and kept my money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's and that's like you said that that matches perfectly what you just yeah, said. Absolutely. Now and now I'm going to bust you out again now define education education in its general sense is a form of learning in which the knowledge skills values beliefs and habits of a group of people are transferred from one generation to the next through storytelling discussion teaching training or research now, education you know as far as the cure compassion understanding respect education education gives us options mm -hmm. you know um for one, what what is I would say the main thing we as human beings want? We want to we want to survive. We want security. We want to feel safe. We want to feel accepted, and we want to feel like we can better ourselves. You know, so when you're educated, you can get more places, and you can you can learn more things. For one, you can feel more accepted. Mm -hmm. You know, with around the people who are educated also around you, and this also opens options for you to prosper. You know, options for you to be safe, options for you to survive in this world. When you're not educated, you don't feel like you can make it. Yeah. And then when you're not, when a person's not educated, they feel, well, it puts you in a, it puts you in animal mode because you feel like everybody's attacking you when you're not educated. So if we, as far as us, you know, the cure, and we're trying to help people, we're trying to cure the world, we got to educate people. Mm -hmm. We have to give them options. Like, and I use this as an example. One time, uh, someone told me about a. a, a uh, news report they were watching about the um uh, well the the shooting the um, who's it darren wilson and mike brown is it mm -hmm. i always use the rapper's name on yeah. accident what's the rapper's name chris, brown. Say chris brown i always say chris brown actually but mike <laughs> brown and they said the reporter was talking to this guy you know he's like oh he's interviewing this guy and this guy's got a gun in his hand right there and he's like you know uh, and, and the guy's like you know yeah man i don't care i'll shoot somebody you know this and that, that. and he said the reporter's like oh my god really so you just kill someone huh and then you know and the, the guy's like yeah i will and he's like oh that's so tell us more about how you feel and i said hold on a second i said who do you think was the bad guy on that video he said the guy with the gun i said no the reporter right the reporter i said now here's if the reporter had done this Okay, so how do you feel? Man, I'll shoot anybody, this and that. Well, what, 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 why would you want to shoot anybody? Because this and that. Well, you know what? Do you know there's a better way that you can handle this? Do you know what? Well, no, I don't think so. Well, let me, I'll tell you what. I got to deal with you. If you give me just one day, I'm going to connect you to some people that will teach you how to go about this the right way. Yeah. And get better options than you ended up shot in the head by the cops and shooting somebody. You don't, Do you have kids, family, anybody you care about that you don't want to see shot? Yeah. Because when you start shooting, you, I mean, you're a smart guy. I'm looking at you now, and you're tough. You got a gun. You're ready to go. Don't you think people shoot back or you think you're the only one that shoots? You know what I'm saying? He didn't try to solve the problem. Yeah. He was just trying to up his ratings and make this dude look like a monster. Right. But if he had educated him right. and said, you know, there's a way, you know, I can get you uh, on uh, steps down in Jeff City and you can talk to some, you know, some war cleavers in suits and they will listen to you. Yeah. There are, you know, things, measures you can take and this and that and gave him an option yeah. of education where he's saying, I didn't know I could do something mm -hmm. else. Cause to him, it's like this. Say when you, when all you got is a hammer, everything's a nail. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And, and when you, that's the only option that you can see that you can do when you get to a frustrated point. You feel that nothing else is going to solve your problem. Nobody's there to help you. Yeah. Then everybody, yeah. any human being, does that. That's mm -hmm. how we respond. We start responding. Like I said, we go back to animal instinct of survival. Yeah. And then it becomes a point where you feel like I have no life. I'm not going to have a life. So screw it. I'm taking somebody with me. Mm -hmm. And we as a society don't want that to happen. So that's why I say education has to be, you know, there for everybody. Yeah, from, can, from a good from a good person, though. You, that's why people need mentors. They need trainers. They need right. senseis because a lot of people's, especially youth education nowadays, is video games and, you know, TV. And that's their form of education. That's who they're learning from. So when I think of education in this aspect from the cure, I'm thinking proper education. I'm thinking proper education from, a, you know, and that goes back to people having a good mentor, you know, a good teacher, a good trainer, you know, s stuff like that. So, yeah. And we can't, we can't say proper education because they need to be cure, cure P instead yeah. of cure. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's still but, education. Yeah. Well, education, like it's like it defined is uh, information, you know, and, and, you know, basic ways to create a society that, yeah. that operates and functions. The education in the United States is different than the education in the rainforest. Yeah. You know, where they survive, they have different ways of surviving. So yeah, it would have to, for it to even be education, have to be 
where that those individuals can survive in that type of society mm-hmm. that they're in. All right, let's go back to our scenario before we oh, okay. take off. Because the scenario gives people a really good understanding sometimes of um, you know what this actually means in, clarification. in everyday use. Yeah. So, so you were giving a scenario just... Okay, I remember, um, yeah, I said if I walk, you know, the the main one of the main things we all look down on is a bomb. You know, you when you walk downtown anywhere and you see a guy sitting on a thing with a bottle of booze in his hand, just sitting there, you know, you walk past him and ignore him. Mm-hmm. Or you patronize them, you know, or you feed some guilt and give them some money, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? And this is the truth, you know, I mean, I'm, this is the stuff I do too. I'm never pointing a finger. Like I said, when I point one finger at you, I'm pointing four back or three back at my, oh, I'm pointing two at you if I point the thumb too, but I'm pointing more fingers back at myself <laughs> than I am at you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So this is, you know, we're trying to all work this together and just keep it real. But what I'm trying to do when I uh, walk up on, uh, you know, a bum, which uh, actually during my fight career, Bums in St. Louis used to fly for me. All the bums knew who I was. Wow. They would come up to him. We knew it. Jermaine was on. And we knew each other. And we hang. They always used to keep. They always kept me hip on what was going on on the streets. <laughs> you know, hey man, it's going on. This hey, it's going to be some guys coming down this net. Hey, I heard. You know, they always kept me because yeah. they they out there. They yeah. know what's happening. You know, but when I see a bum and he's laying here and he's got his coat pulled over, my look down. The first thing I'm, you know, I'm gonna think. I'm gonna say, okay, that might be a war vet. Yeah, that might be a guy who went through hell. And seen some things that he just can't handle anymore. Yeah. But because of what he's seen and what he did, it ruined his life. I get to walk around here and look down on him. Yeah. And enjoy mine. Mm-hmm. You know, so now I just place him possibly above me. Yeah. You know, and then even that, let's say it's just an everyday citizen. Maybe he's got a mental disease where he can't get along with anybody. Nobody can get along with him. And, he, you know, he, he there's no way it can be solved. Yeah. And, and this is where he ended up. Or maybe he was a, a good man. Who had a good home, had a good life and everything, and something happened at work where it just broke him. Yeah. And he lost everything, all just like that, before he could blink an eye, and then this is where he ended up. Mm-hmm. So when you when you have that kind of compassion, yeah. you know, that keeps you from looking down on that on that person. Right. And that can be something that could be true of a, of a bum you're looking down at. I've talked to some bums that are pretty smart. Yeah. A lot of times that's what I do. I say, look, man, I'm going to go get you a sandwich and get you a drink, but you got to tell me something. Yeah. You know, that's what I want from you. I want knowledge. You know, And I might even ask him. I remember it was a bum before I asked him. He was the nicest bum I ever met in my life. He was the nicest guy I ever met in my life. I mean, he was super. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You know. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. Is it better, you know, being like you are than... Dealing with the rat race? He said, yeah. yeah. He said, I'd rather do this than have to get back out there and deal with the crap than be, being, you know, the way it is and have to be who I was, you know, than do this. You know, you never know. He might have been some stockbroker who was ripping everybody off, yeah. you know, and got tired of it and said, I'm, money means that now he's a monk, yeah. <laughs> you know, but he's a bum monk, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, because they kind of the same thing. Yeah. You know, they all just give up. So, I mean, that's what I was saying with the bum. Now, understanding, and I think I just kind of covered that, where trying to understand, like when I asked the bum, you know, is this better yeah. for you being like this and getting an understanding as to why he's in this position? Or even like, you know, there's the old joke, you know, uh, bum ass, well, hey, man, can I get two bucks? No, I'm not going to give it to you. You know, you're just going to spend it on wine. And then there's a joke where the guy said, I gave the bum two bucks to spend on wine because that's what I was really spending on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not your daddy. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But this guy who's staying drunk on the streets that might be the only thing that's killing the, the things in his head that yeah. might make him lose it mm-hmm. and become something worse in society than we can dream he can become yeah. because of what he may have experienced or what he may have seen or mental illness which i'm not saying you know alcohol is the answer or anything like that i'm just saying about understanding right, just getting people to understand yeah people. that i'm not trying to judge you that i'm better than you i'm just trying to understand why you do what you do right you know and then it goes back to the, res- the respect which i almost covered everything in the first compassion part <laughs> you know you never know who that guy was yeah you never know what he accomplished in life. He may have an answer to your problem that you you experience in the day. Yeah. Like I said, he may have been a stockbroker or a scientist. Like this happens all the time. Scientists create something good. And then it's, it, it's something that deals with energy, you know. And that's what they want to use for good. And here comes the government. Yeah. We want this for war. No, I'm not doing that. And then they, yes, you are. You know, or they get kidnapped by Russia. Now all these countries after them. We need this scientist. We want him. And so he might have just dropped everything yeah. and went out there and went underground to become a bomb because he don't want to deal with that. And you might be talking to that guy right now. Right. And you might ask him something. He might have the answer because he's a pure genius. Yeah. That's, that's going to turn your life around. It's a good way to you look know? at it. Yeah. yeah. And that, it, it could is. be. You got to at least look at it that way. Just so. Yeah. So the re- having the respect. That just because this individual is out here like this doesn't mean they haven't accomplished anything. Right. You know, of course. Sense. And then the education, sometimes bums, there are bums who don't know that there are steps they can take to 
come out of their position. Yeah. You know, that there are places they can go to that will help them, you know, and uh, things like that. So that's kind of the example, you know, the example it's that not, I yeah. give you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know we ran along when this time. <laughs> so, and I, the, the cure was supposed to be short too. It wasn't was it? supposed to be short. But it's because yeah. you started off with the elevator thing, trying to go and run into oh, the car washes and all it. that kind of stuff. It's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, but everybody, thanks for listening again. This is Jermaine Andre, you know, and uh, Rebecca Beck, my co-host on here, and I appreciate you for being with us again for Life Fight. Bye. Take care. See you next time. For all things Jermaine Andre, get books, get trained. Learn the secrets behind his brawn, his brain, and his edge. Visit JermaineAndre.com. Life Fight with Jermaine Andre is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.